Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. And it is time to sport out the new wig. It's like my summer wig and I feel so feisty. I haven't been a blonde in a long time and I haven't had bangs in a very long time either. What have I enjoyed the most? Obviously my list is gonna be different from your list but that does not mean that my list is wrong. You know, film is subjective and or more than likely I have not seen the movie because I, you guys, have only seen a measly, let me just make sure because I don't want to like short myself, a measly 34 movies this year. You know, life happens, you know, sometimes things are more important than movies as much as I love me a good movie. You'll see a list of movies kind of scrolling up my face right here in case you're like, well, why isn't this or that? Again, more than likely, I haven't seen it. More than likely it's on this list and or it might be a horror movie. Yeah, no, I don't fuck with that shit. So honorable mentions, you know, I, I don't have much to choose from. It's only 34 movies. Blackberry, The Blackening, Air, Knock on the Cabin, Creed 3. Those are my honorable mentions. Now, Top 10, here we go. I have a new format, y'all. We're gonna see how this works out. I just honestly put all the posters here where you see them in that little corner. You already see one. Um, Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. Honestly, that's the last movie that I watched. And that's actually what kind of shifted everything else down. I didn't like put them in any particular order. Honestly, as they were like on my side thing, I just kind of like brought them over and they're just in random order, to be honest with you. So who knows? Number one may come out like, third place on here or something you know and then y'all gotta click out because let's, let's face it everybody just wants to know what your number one movie is are you there god it's me margaret it's a great little coming of age story um it's set in the 70s we have rachel mcadams we have kathy bates and we're just following margaret we're going into those pre-teenage hormonals time when they started going with the whole i must i must I must increase my bus. I was like in bed and I was like, man, I gotta increase this bus too. And I'm over here trying to do a little dance exercise. <laughs> it check marked all the feelings. I got joy, like emotional. There was laughter. It really gets everything. If you're looking for a movie to like see with your like preteen, teenage daughter to kind of maybe get her into the talks of, you know, getting your period, how you're gonna feel about boys and just all that talk in general this could be a nice little uh, movie as soon as i saw it i just absolutely loved it but it is gonna be number five for now up next we have cocaine bear your eyes do not deceive you cocaine bear is indeed in my top 10 because it is totally my type of movie y'all ridiculous it's memorable it's absurd it is a fucking grizzly bear trying to get its fix it is a crack bear well coke bear it is it, it's crazy there is like mauling involved there's violence there's limbs being ripped out there's a freaking bear on cocaine she knows where the cocaine is at i mean she sniffed it and she's like oh you got a cocaine bag i'm gonna go over there i'm gonna take it and i'm gonna fucking kill your ass if you don't give me that shit right now Everybody in the movie knew exactly like what type of movie they were in. I don't feel like anybody was really like overdoing it or where they were like, oh, I'm just in this fucking movie for a paycheck. Some of you probably may have this as your worst movie of the year. That's totally fine because this movie wasn't made for you. It was made for people like me when you're like, what kind of like who li I am me oh this was also uh ray liotta's like one of his last movies if not his last movie that he made but this one is gonna be at number 10. then we have guardians of the galaxy volume 3. once again it hits all the emotions laughter emotional anger joy uh like I like a satisfaction to the end of this trilogy I think like they did such a great job with telling this story yes it is more on the story of Rocket which was totally fine because we do hear about his story throughout you know the movies and you only get glimpses because obviously he doesn't want to talk about it because he was just like tortured and ripped apart and everything but to actually be able to experience what he went through and with one of like the worst MCU villains with his damn animal cruelty self 
destroying planets the tears you guys I again just it just hits every everything this one is number three Sisu is about this guy this gold digger guy like like actually digging gold not like a gold digger it's set in the Nazi times I believe it is I drink some more I think it's like the Nazis anywho when he finds his gold he's walking back to try to go sell the gold the Nazis grab him steal him steal him <laughs> steal his gold they fuck with the wrong person mm -mm -mm. y'all don't know sisu y'all don't know this most dangerous guy is this john wick's like grandfather maybe because this motherfucker he great great y'all he like oh mm, he ain't got shit to lose because he's lost everything but he also ain't gonna lie ain't gonna lie ain't gonna die there is a violence all over there is so much guts, so much dismemberment. It's awesome, you guys. It's so in the mere fact that this guy does not talk. Kind of think about it like Willy's Wonderland, like last year, which was like also one of my favorite movies with Nick, Nick Cage, and he also didn't talk. It's the same thing here because he doesn't fucking talk. He just uh, grunts. I loved it. And that is uh, number four Spider Man Across the Next Galaxy. Damn it, Across the Spider Verse. <laughs> We love it it is so good it is like a perfect movie if any of the top 10 i would say that this one for sure is one that you should definitely check out in theaters just because it looks absolutely beautiful the colors the animation we get all the spider-mans y'all number one movie see look we didn't have to wait far far long number one movie already we're moving on scream six it is six right i think that is six Scream is one of my favorite slashers, uh, if not my favorite slasher movie. And in case you're like, Stephanie, you say you don't like scary movies. I don't like scary movies, but I do love slashers, okay? I don't want shit popping up in my face, scaring the bejesus out of me. Ah, no. I want to see people get like sliced into half apparently and like guts exploding. It's a fun movie. It's campy. It, it's more violent this time. There's like way more. I mean, is it the greatest thing? No. Is it predictable? See, si, pero like, I don't care. This one is number six. I think we're going to put it at number six for now because I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Like, if that's where I want to put it. It may go down, it may go up. No, I don't think it's going to go up. Then we have John Wick, Chapter 4. It's an action-packed movie, you guys. I mean, at this point, we're kind of like touching Fast and the Furious territory where things just don't add up. And it's like, dude, like, why are you still walking? Why haven't you died? Like, you do realize that you, like, fell. Well, now you didn't fall. You threw yourself out this fucking window and then you hit a car and then you come back down you keep getting like ran over by like all these cars and you're still alive i mean i don't know like i know the suit like protects you from all the bullets but like does it protect you from these falls as well i mean maybe and i haven't officially asked that question before but it could be king's awesome mm -mm -mm. doing his shit mm. i love it love it that's gonna be number two over here it was number one until Spider-Man came along. It was number one for a long time. Then we have How to Blow Up a Pipeline. I've been hearing a lot of great things about it. I think it did have a release last year, but it went like wide this year. So that's why it's on my list this year. Uh, but there's like a bunch of activists, like college students, I believe they are living in this world where like all these in, uh, industrial stuff is like everywhere, you know? When I, I don't think it's just like living in the world. I just think we're just generally like in that world, right? And there's obviously like homes and businesses that are like next to all these factories that are putting like all these chemicals in the air and then just what how they affect the people that are living around. It's really really interesting. It is one of those kind of like movies that are just like here but there's something special to it. There's a message to it as well obviously. I was like oh wow that's like Wow, okay, and then even like how it ends. So that's gonna be number nine. And I I know it's crazy, but I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna switch Cocaine Bear and How to Blow Up a Pipeline is gonna be number 10. I know, you're probably like, Stephanie, it was already bad enough, I don't care. Then we have Renfield, okay? 
It's a crazy movie. Vampire. Nicolas Cage. Mm. Nig Nicolas Cage totally forgot. Wait. No, that's not where it's at. <laughs> I had to think about where. Nicolas Cage is Dracula. We have Nicholas Holt. He is a minion, right? He has some special powers. Um, he's trying to break free from his uh, abusive relationship. I'm telling y'all something that happened in this movie, y'all. Okay, this is why. This is literally why people are always like, you're so crazy. I don't care. I don't care. I know it's crazy, y'all. Okay, welcome mats or anything that says welcome. I don't fuck with that shit. This is a true story, y'all. <laughs> this is a true story. You're probably like, Stephanie, seriously, yes. You think a vampire's gonna let me join up into my house? No, because I ain't not letting you in. And then there's no welcome sign. <laughs> And like, it's so hard because like all the cutest like, m like mats, I'll say welcome and I'm like, no, because the vampires are gonna come into the house. But also on another note, I have seen this TikTok, right? Where they were talking about like supernatural things, I don't know what. And I go, I knew it, I knew it. He had talked about the welcome mats, mats. Uh, whatever <laughs> and like the welcome sign that people go and you're like, you know That's like the biggest loophole that like evil spirits can use to enter your home and I said I, knew it. I said mind you I wasn't thinking about the evil spirits my thing was just vampires But then I was like that makes more sense. That's too like our regular schedule programming. Why Renfield had a welcome mat? When you know good and well, he needs an invitation of all people regardless if you thought he was dead or not or like about to die. You don't know. You don't know. It's Dracula. Like, oh, never. Anywho, this is a crazy movie. Aquafina's in it as well. There's like a lot of like guts and like dismemberment happening. Like I said, we love ourselves some gore. This could be number, number eight. And then lastly, we have The Flash. The controversy that is The Flash. I do also have a out of the theater reaction and I also did another panel with Geeks and Flicks, had a whole thing and talked about The Flash. And I really liked the movie. Obviously it's on my top 10. You can obviously tell right now we're just going to go ahead and put it because there's no other space. Number seven, we'll double check here in a little bit and see if that is indeed where I'm keeping it. It has its flaws. I mean, the CGI, whatever, I don't even give a fuck. The baby situation, yeah, that was fucked up. Like, even for me, like, I'm not, like, a kid person, right? But, like, even, like, I turned around and looked at my sister and I was like, did they really just go there with this? Like, they really went there. Like, I couldn't believe that that's the decision. But I still, I think it was funny, right? But it was, like, fucked up at the same time. It still brought joy. And it still brought emotion because I did cry with uh, either at the end of the movie. There's a lot of cameos there, uh, like Nicolas Cage, just when I was like, oh, where, where's that? Yeah, this is a movie. It was crazy because he was supposed to be Superman at some point. I just kind of wanted to address that I know that there's issues before you're like, well, this, 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 this. I understand. I, I, I get it. I get it. I know that those issues are there. But I still really had a lot of fun with the movie. Issues aside, obviously, a lot of the movies on here have issues. But you know what? It is what it is. Now, we're going to change stuff up. Because, like, I'm kind of, like, like how I'm feeling and everything. It's going to drop a lot, y'all. It's going to drop a lot. I just kind of put it there because it was open. But now that it's, I see it, I'm, like, I'm not really liking it there. Okay. So... <laughs> Cocaine Bear is moving up to number seven. That's right, ahead of Renfield. And then we're gonna put How to Blow Up a Pipeline at number nine. And then we're gonna put The Flash as number 10. Actually, you know what? Uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna do How to Blow Up a Pipeline as number eight. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I like that better. Cause I really like Renfield, but I love Cocaine Bear. And I don't mind putting How to Blow Up a Pipeline in front of Renfield. There we go. And that's looking much better for me. Again, because it's my, my list. All right, my batteries are about to die. So we got The Flash is number 10, Renfield as 9, How to Blow Up Pipeline as 8, Cocaine Bear as 7, Scream 6 as number 6, Are You There, God is Me, Morgan as number 5, Sisu as number 4, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 as number 3, John Wick Chapter 4 as number 2, and then Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse as number 1. Let me know down below how your list is looking. If you haven't already, don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that other good stuff. And until next time, I'll see you guys at concessions. Bye.